I'm Craig McMillan, Sky commentator and former Black Cat. The fastest uh, one day hundred for New Zealand is uh, Chris Cairns here against India three seasons ago. It took 75 balls, so McMillan has a chance now to equal Chris Cairns. Two runs for his hundred. Last ball. Come on, Macca. There it goes. And Daddy's done it. You little beauty. Cricket for me started in Canterbury. And again, they're going to get more practice. That's a bigger hit. In fact, that's the biggest hit so far. That hasn't even bounced on the roof. That's cleared it. Massive. You mentioned Greg Chappell. Surely that one, if the first one wasn't as big as Greg Chappell's, that one would have to be. But I love playing for Canterbury, the Red and Blacks. Um, that was always one of my goals as a youngster. So I used to, at times, bunk from school and go down to the old Lancaster Park and sit in the number three stand and watch Canterbury play um, throughout the summer. Well, he's done it again. <laughs> and this has gone for six. Well, well. He really got under that and launched it. I've seen John Parker play reverse lap, if you like, and hit it over mid-on. But he's actually got under this one and hoisted it away for six. Couldn't imagine playing for another association, so very proud of the fact that I only played for the one team. That There was never really any opportunity to play for another team, never any thoughts. So, you know, they've been so successful over a number of years to be part of that dynasty that was created sort of late to mid-90s and early 2000s was um, something I look back on with a lot of fond memories. Beautifully struck and through for four. I love playing for my country. The good, the bad and the ugly. McMillan on the ground once more. Well, I've seen most things. First time I've seen this. It is a deliberate ploy. But very quickly early on in the stance, he comes straight again. He's able to hit him down the ground. Now, it had uh, you scratching your head, certainly had Shane Warne scratching his, and it'll probably bear a comment at some point about there. And that is brilliant. And again, and four more. And that's only a couple of bounces. There it is. Third boundary in a row. That's it. Another four. Unbelievable. This time he goes over the men in the third man region inside the circle. Four fours in a row. Down the ground. This is going to be a sixer. Holy cow, this is sensational. Where's he got it? He's got it! He's got the world record! He may not know it, but 26 now off and over is a world record in Test and cricket. That was the most run ever scored in an over in Test cricket. 26 runs. Probably the best moment for me was the day I got my Test cap, my first Test, because um, that was something as a youngster I dreamed of all my life was playing cricket for New Zealand. I'd got my black cap, which was very special, um, and I was, I guess, achieving you know, boyhood dreams. So there's other things like winning the Test Series in England, um, winning the Champions Trophy in Kenya in 2000, um, still the only um, international trophy that New Zealand's won overseas. There are special times that you reflect on and, and remember fondly, but uh, my first Test match was um, will always be the most special thing for me. The best bowler I ever faced, tough question, because I was lucky enough to play in an era where I played against I think probably half a dozen of the greatest all-time bowlers that have played the game. If I was going to separate, probably Shane Warne gets the nod just because um, of the fact he was a leg spinner. It was the most difficult art to do. He made spin bowling cool and it was really uncool for a lot of years where people just, kids just wanted to run in and bowl fast. And then Warne came along and bowling his leg spinners and all of a sudden changed the way kids bowled and, and looked at cricket and it made it, as I said, really cool to try. Um, and he was just the ultimate competitor. I mean, you can talk about McGrath and Akram and Donald and Pollock. Um, 
You know, there's some great names there, but I think I would probably rate Shane Warne as number one, just ahead of those other guys. Gets you every time, doesn't it, Matt? <laughs> well, it shouldn't, but it does. Good evening, Mark. <laughs> We're in for a cracker tonight. We're retired from all forms of the game, but we've managed to stay close to the game by being a Sky Cricket commentator. I've really enjoyed the transition from going from being a player to commentator. For me, it means that I can stay involved in the game. It's a game that I've grown up with, I've loved. It's pretty much everything that I've done. So um, to be able to still be able to talk about cricket, um, be it game day, you know, work with players, talk with players, do all those things, um, for me is the next best job after being a player. I've got the next best seat. So. Um, I consider myself very lucky that I've been given the opportunity to work with the likes of Ian Smith and uh, Mark Richardson, Simon and all those guys um, and I've really enjoyed my time in the commentary box so I look forward to doing that for a few more years yet. As a commentator one of the first things you get told is just call what you see um, and when New Zealand are playing obviously you want New Zealand to do well and to win but um, you just try and call what you see and you hope that there's a good game and that New Zealand end up on the right side. Same for when Canterbury play. Um, I've got my patch on my eye, but I've got to call it as I see it. There's no doubt that the teams and the sides you've been associated with, you want to do well, and that continues after you finish playing. So, yeah, at times there's a bit of banter too amongst the different commentators. We all come from different areas, so um, we're not afraid to take the mickey out of one another, so it's good fun. One game that stands out actually is a T20 International at Jade Stadium, so my hometown, and I hadn't done many home games. New Zealand versus Australia. Brendan McCallum scored 100 for New Zealand. That's massive! Oh my God, that's the biggest hit here in the new AMI stand. By a mile. Wow, what a way to christen the Dean stand. Look at McCallum, sits back in the box. And he goes towards the short side and he got all of that. That's gone a long way. And you won't see a smile on Dirk Nana's face after this one. It's gone miles back. Yes! What a hundred! What a hundred that is! Just stay there and acknowledge everybody! And then Clark came out for Australia and it ended up being a tie. So we had the Super Over as well. We had Tim Southey, I think, bowled beautifully. It was just an amazing atmosphere. There was, I think, full house, 26, 27,000 people at Jade Stadium. And the chanting, um, the clapping, the noise was unbelievable. Gets it over the top of the way. New Zealand have won behind point. It's a ripper from Gupto. That is a game, to me, I remember sitting in the commentary box with Ian Smith, who was just going nuts. Um, and as I said earlier, you know, when New Zealand are doing well, playing well, it's the best time to be on the mic and talking. And uh, that game for me certainly stands out. I've loved cricket as a player and now as a Sky commentator, and I hope in the future to stay involved in the game. Who waits and he's hit it up, up here. Oh, brilliant catch by Craig McMillan. Super catch.